another Eldrazi mirror. Eventually, at what point do you think the Exo Bracket, I mean, it still has Jeff Hoagland in it, so there's one non-Eldrazi player. Yeah, and uh, Hoagland, he's not big on winning modder, though, so that's not a very good prize either. All right, starting out, Lucas Key first on the play. He'll start with Adakar Wastes. For Kepke, he does have the double land. That's going to be Eldrazi Temple into Eldrazi Mimic. Kiefer, he'll, he'll answer back with his own Eye of Ugin. It's a copy of Eldrazi Sky Spawner. Just some development on the early turns. These soul lands, you know, the Eldrazi Temples and Eye of Ugin seem to be just so important in the early turns of mirror matches. Absolutely, and having the Eye of Ugin for Kiefer versus the Eldrazi Temple for Kepki is just uh, huge. It, it starts out, you know, it only made two mana on that turn, but has the potential to do so much more as the game progresses. For turn two, it is a Sky Spawner of Kepke. He will match Kiefer's Sky Spawner. We pass back. For those of you who don't know the Kiefer family, all three of them recently working with the Team Lotus guys. Lucas, the oldest one, I believe at 15. All three of them brothers here. And it will be sacrificing the Scion Token for a Reality Smasher on turn three for Lucas, and he will swing in the team. I really like the energy from Lucas when we pan to his face there. I kind of, don't you miss back when you used to play your magic cards like that? You attack and you just slam the cards, swing it in, everything. The world was new. Everything was exciting. I'll cast Reality Smasher. Yeah, attack yeah. you for five. Yeah, yeah, you know? And you're just like, yeah, and you go straight to your life pad. <laughs> like, yeah, this is great. I'm hitting him. There's very little I get that excited about anymore. We'll see what Kepke's response is. He traded the Sky Spawners. He had the option of trading for the Sky Spawner or trading his team for the Smasher. Definitely went with the more conservative of Flyers trade. Yeah, um, the Mimic, the thing about it, it's always just way worse on defense than offense. So if Kefki is able to generate a Thought Not Seer or a Reality Smasher on this turn, then the, the crackback matters a lot more than the block. Yeah, he might even be able to race. Right. We'll see which of those large creatures he's going to go with. It looks like he does have a Reality Smasher and a Thought Not in hand. It's pretty good. Uh, we, we might see the sacrificing of the Scion for the Smasher. I think that I'd be inclined to play the Thought Not Seer or something else on this turn. He's going to go with Eldrazi Displacer. Make the Mimic into a 3-3 and swing for 4. So leaving up one white, that might be Path to Exile. Yeah, there's just no way it's anything else. And I do think that I spotted Path to Exile in Kepke's hand. Now, it's interesting. This means he'd have to discard for the Reality Smasher, though. Um, is it just too risky for him to race? Yeah, when you're at 12, uh, it's definitely a precarious situation. Just any other creature into a Drowner of Hope can make it really hard to have you know, any life points remaining. Go over to Kiefer's side. He'll go to combat. And here's going to be a path to exile. It will discard a copy of Thought Not Seer. That's a pretty good win for Lucas. That's a hefty cost for Kepke. So definitely taking this Reality Smasher very seriously. Smasher will be exiled. Luke, Devin, or rather Lucas gets to go for a basic land. Now this, remember this is a colored version, so it plays islands and planes, not, no copies of wastes. Yep, uh, planes, um, generally the more important mana because it's able to cast both Path to Exile and Eldrazi Displacer. The blue is pretty much just Drowner of Hope. I don't, uh, I think the Cyborg has Stubborn Denials and that's really it. Uh, Sky Spawner is the other option see what Lucas has next. It's an Eldrazi Mimic and an Endless One on four. Once again, uh, we see the power of Ayabugan versus Eldrazi Temple. It just generated four mana right there. Let's go back. But Kepke does have the answer to Endless One. He does have this copy of Eldrazi Displacer in hand. Yep, already in play. Yeah, that's, that, that ability to just blink it is huge. Uh, this is where the, the temple shines. The temple can generate two mana to activate the displacer. Let's go back over to Devon. A lot of options. So these mirror matches frequently end up grinding, in which case players care about the number of cards in their hand. But this game seems to have a different pace to it. Uh, you start being pretty concerned about life totals and, and speed here. Kepke's going to use the Displacer to exile, to blink away the Endless One. He'll swing with the team. Six damage. Lucas will go down to nine. 
Yeah, in Kepke's position, you don't want to end up in a combat where that 4-4 does any reasonable attacking or blocking when you had the option to displace it. The concern here is that a Reality Smasher coupled with that Mimic cracks back for a lot of damage. Here's Reality Smasher from Kiefer. Makes his Mimic into a 5-5. Will he swing one or both? It's going to be both. That'll put Kepke down to two. But Lucas will be dead on the swing back to a Smasher on Kevin's side, or even a Thought Not Seer. Yep. Uh, so as the board stands, he has at a crack back for six. Um, anything that can generate three more attack on Kepke's uh, side is lethal. That's going to be Hollowed Fountain from Kiefer. And he'll pass. He has one card in hand. If it's a Path to Exile, he might be able to win this. Strongly representing Path to Exile. Uh, the, this, this makes it so that Kepke's board only needs one additional power to be lethal. Uh, though if you have Path the Exile, playing the land tapped is definitely not worthwhile. You gotta wonder, well maybe not, or maybe Lucas is a heads-up bluffer. I mean, if you're dead on the swing back, it is worth shocking to represent Path to Exile here. Yeah, absolutely, it's certainly a better line than Conceding. Well here's Reality Smasher from Kepke. That card, because it has haste, it, the, the Path to Exile would win through Thought Not Seer, but it would not, does not win through Reality Smasher. Even a Path to Exile does not save Lucas. Nope, you could path the Mimic to get rid of five power, but then you're still taking nine, uh, which is lethal even without the Hollowed Fountain. Shows that he did have the path. Yeah, and a, and a smart play there, If, like I said, if it were Thought Not Seer from Kepke, Lucas would have would be safe there. Right. But game one will go over to Devin Kepke. So far winning three games in a row of the Eldrazi Mirror, we saw him defeat Jerry Thompson 2-0 last round. Yeah, uh, he's definitely played this match a couple of times. Uh, certainly has experience uh, against very strong players. So Kiefer is no slouch. He's 7-0 with the deck. Uh, despite his young age, he is definitely a very skilled player. So you look at the sideboards, it becomes pretty clear that the two of them have been working together and are teammates. Uh, you see the same collection of six cards. Uh, Kepke has an extra disenchant. Lucas has an extra rest in peace. Otherwise, we're looking at the exact same sideboards. Yep, and uh, pretty much for the mirror, we know that they're both reaching for worship. So the question for me then is, are, if they're going to cast Worship, are they going to want anything like Disenchant or Stubborn Denial to answer the opponent's Worship? I mean, it's just a straight breaker. If it gets into play and you don't have any of those, you're not going to be able to beat it. Yeah, you lose, right? Right. Okay, well, you, you, maybe you need some insurance then. Um, so, okay, let's say I, I don't want to lose to Worship, right? Yep. Um, I can board and Disenchant, and then I won't lose if one's on the board. Mm -hmm. But that's literally the only card it hits, so I don't really want to board that in. Do I go toward that or do I go toward Stubborn Denial, a card that may or may not answer worship, but in the case you do the other person doesn't have worship, at least it's not a dead card. So in my mind, I think that the combination of Disenchant and Stubborn Denial plus worship, you're bringing in a lot of cards. I don't know if we can necessarily afford to sideboard that many cards from our deck out in this matchup. Uh, it's possible they're looking at boarding out Endless One because it's so bad against the Displacers. Uh, that's probably where I would be looking. Uh, so how many cards can we bring in is the question. I do think that Stubborn Denial comes in before Disenchant does. Uh, countering Worship and also countering Path to Exile or Dismember can be pretty huge. All right, so we talked about the Season 1 schedule building toward the Columbus Invitational. If you want to go ahead and get, come out next season and try to qualify for one of our three at-large spots, we're going to look at our Season 2. This starts over in Milwaukee when we have our next Modern Open at the end of April. It makes its way across the East through Indianapolis for Modern again, Standard in Atlanta and Orlando before we make our way finally down to Texas for the Modern Open in Dallas in June. After that, we make our way up into the East in Worcester, go toward the Columbus Open Weekend, then Baltimore with some standard opens before we finally make it back up to Syracuse and New Jersey for our Season 2 Invitational. That's August 19th through 21st, all leading toward three more spots to our Players' Championship in the Star City Games Season 2 of the Tour. Yep, exciting stuff, a lot of spots, opportunity to play Standard, Modern, and even Legacy next weekend. I know that I will be watching that one. I just uh, I don't get to uh, interact with Legacy as much as I used to. You know, and he, one of the things I'm interested about when you talk, when you look at Legacy is whenever there's a great modern deck, frequently you have to ask, is there a port of this into Legacy? Does this change up Legacy? We have not had a premier level Legacy to event since Oath of the Gatewatch and all these Eldrazi decks came out. Yeah, I definitely have heard people talking about, do we, Legacy already had decks that play four Ancient Tomb, four City of Traders. Many of these decks were also Cloud Post, Glimmer Post decks. Uh, generally, Mud is the deck that I'm talking about. Though, sure. there are some other options in that kind of category of big man, mana deck. So you're wondering if there's Eldrazi Mud now? Yeah, it's something that people have been talking about. I know that just slotting Thought Not Cheater straight into 
into mud just seems like an actual reasonable thing to do. Yeah. Uh, I don't know if you want to actually play Ayabugan and Eldrazi, Eldrazi Temple in these decks. It's certainly possible. The issue is that they don't cast Chalice of the Void uh, ahead of schedule. Uh, so that's my one reservation there. You though still have eight lands to cast it. Maybe that's fine. Yeah, yeah. And it's also true that if you're playing uh, Cloud Post, it doesn't get you ahead on Chalice of the Void anyway. Uh, so maybe it's just uh, another thing. And also, uh, the Eye of Ugin does open up those busted Mimic draws. So that could be huge. Be interesting. That's that's certainly what I'm looking at. Is you know, is this going to make waves in Legacy? It's so good in Modern right now that I wouldn't be surprised if the answer is yes. Yeah, uh, a big difference between Modern and Legacy is the fact that if I'm combating your Ayabugan with Ghost Quarter, I am sacrificing a land and leaving you with a land in play. I know where you're going with this. Wasteland, <laughs> <laughs> Wasteland's a little bit stronger than Ghost Quarter. So there's definitely something to be said there. Wasteland certainly would be good against any sort of Eldrazi deck in Modern, or in Legacy. Yeah, if they put Wasteland in Modern, it would be, yeah, it'd be pretty good be, there, too. That would really change the format. Probably, probably would see a couple decks playing that one. God, that would really change things. They're, they're, yeah, I'm glad we don't have Wasteland in Modern. That's, I mean, that'd be horrible. I believe that that is the consensus opinion. I believe that you people that believe that are probably right that it wouldn't be good for the format. But you still want to Wasteland people in Modern? I want to Wasteland people in every format. I want to open it in draft so, so in I, my <laughs> expedition. I just remember having this deck that was playing Bounce Lands and thinking, boy, if Wasteland was a thing, this sure would uh, be pretty bad. <laughs> I have a friend that has a common and uncommon cube, and for a while he had bounce lands and wasteland in the cube. <laughs> you just can't play bounce lands anymore. It's too much of a liability. Wastelanding a bounce land felt so good. <laughs> it's, <laughs> it's the worst. You play a bounce land with the bounce trigger on the stack, they wasteland it. Just, just, oh god, it's you lose the game. That would have been pretty good against Bloom you just Titan. Lose the game. Oh, it's horrible. <laughs> it's just. It's not even complicated. This, the game is over. Every time that I've lost to a Cavern of Souls in my life, I immediately go on a rant about how Wasteland should have been legal in that format. <laughs> well, there are Cavern of Souls in the Eldrazi deck, so maybe you're onto something. Uh, probably. I want to play Reality Smasher in, in Legacy. Luckily Sounds for great. people that play Magic, I am not responsible for designing Magic. <laughs> A scry to the bottom for Kepke. Looks like a scry for Lucas as well. I think a pair of six-card hands here. Actually, Devon on five. Correct. Correction. Lucas will start out on Eldrazi Temple. No, no mimic. Still threatening that turn two thought, not seer. There is a mimic off Eye of Ugin, however, from Devon. And looks like Lucas's draw was Eye of Ugin, so... I think that turn two Thought Seer is going to happen, and there we go. Fair magic right there. That one was pretty, pretty, <laughs> pretty, pretty good. All right, so we see a Dismember, a Idarkar Wastes, a Drowner of Hope, and an Eldrazi Displacer. So Devin either gets to have the Dismember next turn or the Displacer next turn. I'd be inclined to take that Dismember away from him. You just don't want to have your thought not see or dismember. The, not I think, on this board. I think I'd be looking at the Drowner over the Displacer as well if this game goes long enough. Obviously, Devin doesn't have the mana to cast it just yet, but it is the card that you know people talk about as being the breaker in this matchup. Well, Displacer is also very good in this matchup, but Kevin has, Devin has Eye of Ugin, not Eldrazi Temple. Very far from ca activating the ability. Also, the, the possibility that Kiefer just doesn't have any Endless Ones in his deck anymore. Yeah, and the dismember was the grab there. Definitely like that. Take this member. Devin untaps, plays the Attacar Waste, and the Displacer. Looks like another Eye of Ugin for Lucas. A little too much of a good thing. <laughs> he will cast, play a Hollowed Fountain, cast Eldrazi Displacer for one. Fair magic. Pass the turn. Totally reasonable. Draw for Kepke, I believe, is Thought Not Seer, but with no more lands, he has no play. Exactly. What Kepke needs is lands. Uh, Kiefer is in the range to just start proactively displacing things. And that's if he doesn't have any more spells to play, which seems unlikely. Then that's the play. 
draw his path to exile for Lucas. He'll just swing the 4-4. Devin certainly can't double block here. He'll take the damage. Lucas will pass. Yeah, that double block if Kiefer has a removal spell is just too huge of a swing. Looks like that Texas card in Lucas's hand is a disenchant. It's a full it's a full art disenchant. So he's going to, and during Kev Devin's draw, he'll blink his own Thought Not Seer. And look at this from Devin. He, there is three Thought Not Seers, a Displacer, and a Drowner. <laughs> <laughs> so the Displacer is the only castable card here. Makes sense for Kiefer to take that. I will say I'm not in love with that blink. Uh, we saw Kepke miss a land drop and then was unable yeah, to do anything. Yeah, if you give him a land, then that's the worst case scenario. Exactly. The blink there just gives him a random draw. If that's a land, he's starting to cast spells again. Well, the Displacer will be swung by Devin, so Lucas down to 15. And now he'll hit back. Seven damage in Kepke to eight. Another land by Lucas. I believe he has a Worship a Disenchant. Another Eye of Ugin in hand. He'll just pass. Still can't cast any of them yet. Eye of Ugin does not help cast Worship. This is one of those situations where he is worse off for having drawn sideboard cards. If he just if had, he had another, creatures, yeah. An Endless One here would be pretty good. Yeah, yeah. Kepke can't displace it until at least another land comes into play. And with all these Thought Knots here, the Worship combo is going to be no good. Right. Well, here we see Kepke will fetch down to six. Rather, sorry, down to seven. And now we know what's in Kepke's hand. It's just a stack of Thought Not Seers. Yeah, we, we've seen those ones before. Uh, there was no way to Thought Not Kepke off of his own Thought Knots. And we see our first Thought Knots here. Lucas will path to exile it. Now, this is not free. Right? It means that Kepke's that much closer to Drowner of Hope. Yep, uh, Kepke uh, was stumbling on mana for a bit now, but the next turn he'll be untapping with access to at least five mana. Well, can't Lucas just win the game here? He can end step, displace one of Devon's creatures, and then displace the other one, and then swing. Yeah, yeah, I guess Kepke's just dead, so who cares? Okay. <laughs> Thought not seer, he, so Lucas draws, then, he'll, then the exile will happen. But I don't think any of this matters, as long as, Kep as, long as Lucas can fetch a... As long as his hand does not have the second Hallowed Fountain and the planes in it. Yeah, these look like spells to me. So it looks like a clear line for Lucas to win this game. You just got to make the play. See you what Kepke wants to take. Yeah. <laughs> hey, you, you can take Worship or you can take Thought Knots here. You're not beating either of these cards. You're, you're not beating what's on board. So uh, these two are both representing Team Lotus, so they probably uh, both knew the general sideboard plan that the team had. Uh, so this information that you know that uh, Lucas is bringing in Disenchant and Worship probably isn't any news for Kepke. So the worship got exiled by the thought not seer trigger, but looks like looks like Lucas is going for the play here. Yep. <laughs> Kepke Devin's both gonna... tapped his displacer and then figured it was time to concede anyway. I think Lucas just verbally said the play he was making. Yeah. That's a play there. So Lucas evens it up at one game apiece. Let's go back to the sideboard. Disenchant and Worship, both brought in by Lucas Kiefer. For Devin, we don't know. We didn't see any sideboard cards there. Neither player looks like they have Endless Ones in their deck anymore. At least we didn't see them. Haven't seen any, though we also didn't see either player draw a terrible number of cards. A mulligan to six, a mulligan to five, and a pretty quick game, actually. I assume, like, th there's just no way they're not both on Worship, though. I mean, that, that card is for this matchup. Th that's why it's in their deck. You assume they're both in it. The question is what answers they want to deal with it. Maybe Kepke's plan is to just have uh, Kiefer board in Disenchant and Stubborn Denial and just not and just have not worship. not do anything. 
it's a little loose, but you know, it's it has merits. Hey, I think your opponent is actually overboarding on very narrow answers. You just shouldn't board in the threat. Yeah, a worship would have been really bad that game. See, both these players looking good in their Team Lotus shirt hoodies. Both of them on the same team. Same time, Star City Games has our own sale on apparel, which you can get for us. We have the SCG official t-shirt of StarCityGames.com, a excellent 50-50 cotton polyester blend. In fact, if you get one of these, you can look as good as Tom Ross here, who looks good in just about anything. You can find out more about this, StarCityGames.com slash apparel. I don't know if you necessarily look as good as Tom Ross, but, you know, the shirt is nice. This is the first step. The first right. step. Get, uh, you'll need a leather jacket uh, to supplement mm -hmm. the Star City Games t-shirt. You just have to have that that I don't care when I'm really cool attitude all the time, you know? Right. That's la that last one takes a while to cultivate. Yeah. Tom Ross wasn't born Tom Ross. He well, had, he was. He had to become Tom Ross. <laughs> <Sure>. <laughs> That's Heyman. <laughs> 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 really now? <laughs> uh, his given name was Stephen Billings, actually. It's a fun, Sorry, that was, okay. fun piece of trivia. Tom, is it Tom Ross is his stage name. <laughs> Before anyone hits trivia, I, I definitely just made that up. <laughs> don't, don't, don't tweet about <laughs> Stephen Billings. <laughs> he doesn't like... He doesn't... He'll deny it. He doesn't like that name. <laughs> so if you, tweet at, if you tweet at him, he'll say, I don't know who that is. If it were true, he'd deny it anyway. Also, Devin will be back on the play for game number three. Each of these seem like, um, I mean, okay, the backbone of the Eldrazi decks are the land cards. And as much as the spells matter, I feel like the lands are what's deciding each game. Absolutely. Neither of these players have that Vesuva technology that I've been so excited about. Well, that one, yeah, Jerry Thompson, the Roanoke players on this deck, have adopted the Vesuvas. Yes. So we saw Cedric Phillips playing it, Jerry Thompson. Yeah, we cut into a match with Jerry Thompson with Vesuva in play, but I didn't get the satisfaction of watching him play it. It just sounds great. I remember at one point, this reminds me back, going back to that Cobblade era, right? At one point, Jerry decided... I remember playing one of his lists where it was all about Stoneforge Mystic and Squadron Hawks. He said so much that for the mirror, he decided to have a bunch of Phyrexian Metamorphs. <laughs> Just he's like, well, at least if they play Stoneforge Mystic, I'll have one too. Yeah, you, and you can wait to copy Batter Skull as well. But you wouldn't. He'd be like, you just get a fifth Squadron Hawk in your deck? <laughs> you'd have, no, I'm not kidding. You'd Metamorph Squadron Hawk, and, and you'd be thrilled about it. I believe you. And it just reminds me, I was thinking, okay, this, this feels really similar. Yeah. The, right? The, well, if he's going to have the nut draw, I guess I want to have it too. That's extremely similar. And also, you know, it, it's, it's an Eye of Ugin that doesn't have to be Eye of Ugin. If you have Eye yourself, you just copy a different land. Right, yeah, you don't have, it's not just dead. Speaking of mana, Kepke gets to start out on one of the crucial lands, but Kiefer will match. So it's Eldrazi Temple and Eye of Ugin to start out with. Three mana for Kepke. He will go to Eldrazi Displacer on turn two. On Kiefer's side, it looks like he has the full four mana on turn two. We'll see if it is the Thought Not Seer. Yeah, Kiefer's not matching with Ayabugan. He's actually raising. Uh, I, yes. would, <laughs> I would take that position very easily. So they can just play Temple and play two, Eldra two Eldrazis. But he'll go with Cavern of his own and play his own Eldrazi Displacer. And a Mimic to boot. Again, he's raising. Go, he's raising, yeah. <laughs> his his man land makes four mana, not just two. Back over to Kepke, and now it will be the Thought Not Seer. Path to Exile, Path to Exile, two lands. He'll get the removal spell. That is a uh, not great follow-up for Kiefer. Uh, notably, no access to white mana for spells. Yeah, no access to white mana. And also, if you believe this matchup postboard is grindier, Lucas's hand is not good at that. No. And a swing with Eldrazi Displacer. Devin offers the trade. Lucas will decline and go to 17. Lucas does have the ability to blink Kepke's Thought Not Seer and draw cards to try to find white mana, but then the Path to Exile just goes away. So you're not getting anywhere with that line. The Eldrazi Temple from Kiefer. Still no colored mana, but a lot of mana for casting Eldrazi. Yep. Just, just to, uh, wanting for an Eldrazi to cast. Yep. Last card's Cavern of Souls, Island, and Path to Exile. No choice but to just pass the turn. 
this one may be over quick. Yeah, and I don't think that uh, it was wrong for Kiefer to keep this hand. I believe this is a mulligan to six as it is. Okay, yeah, you certainly don't want to go to five then. Right. You, you have the mana. You're, you're looking for the same mana base and better spells when you go to five with a hand like that. Right, a Reality Smasher would just be, would be great here. But as it is, he's going to go ahead and play another Thought Not Seer and bring Lucas's hand to just lands. Kepke grinding out. If Kiefer draws Drowner of Hope, he can cast it next turn. So there is some silver lining, and the Eldrazi Displacer will allow him to go off with it. Kepke made a decision as to whether or not he wanted to offer Thought Not Seer to Lucas, or whether or not he wanted to offer Lucas the chance to double block. He decided to yes, and he swung both creatures. If you're Lucas, you feel like you, ha you have to accept this double block, right? You well, need a card. I think Lucas's best draw is that Drowner of Hope. And if you get rid of, the dis rid of the Displacer, the Drowner is not close to good enough on its own. Uh, so I think that Kepke is actually pretty happy with this trade. See over there next to him, Jeff Hoagland, also at 7-0, currently first place in the standings with Kiki Cord. Yeah, he's pretty good at modern. Lucas right now asking it if the Thought Not Seer gets displaced, just what, you know, how the ordering of triggers works. Lucas does have that option, for example. He wants to know, will he draw and then get exiled? Like, does he get to pick the order of them? Right. As Devin is the controller of the triggers, I believe it's that Devin gets to pick the order they go on. In. Yeah, so the, the blinking happens as part of the same ability. It leaves play and enters the battlefield. So if Lucas is, displaces the... It's still probably worth it for him to displace and Thought Not Seer, because if he draws a land, he just gets a free land. So the play there was to block and then displace his own Mimic, so he just uh, didn't take any damage, which I actually like quite a bit. Yeah, well, he still took three off the other Displacer. Right. If we use that to, to Fog for a turn. Another land was the draw for Kiefer. It was a copy of Ottercar Wastes. Didn't find that Drowner, and now we're getting into territory where it might end up being too late if it does show up. It certainly is looking that way. So something that's pretty interesting to me is uh, we, we know that Worship is a really good trump card in this mirror, but all of the games that we've watched in the blue-white mirror have been games where just like applying pressure is what you wanted to be doing, and drawing Worship is not even necessarily good for even either player. Path to Exile takes care of the Eldrazi Displacer. Well, to be fair, right now, Worship was probably the only card that can save Lucas Kiefer. Yeah, it, it, it's good for Lucas. Uh, Kepke, however, has four cards in hand, and uh, Worship is pretty dead for him. Well, you still feel like the, it's one of those things where the most important card in this matchup after board is still a lot of the main deck cards, right? Thaw Not Seer and really Eye of Ugin still feel like the most important cards in the matchup. Yep, absolutely. Here's a swing for 11. Lucas will take it all, go down to three, and another Eldrazi Displacer. Lucas needs worship. Can he find it? It's a draw. It's Reality Smasher. Great card. Not good here. Yeah, Kepke uh, hanging out with any combination of two creatures that are lethal. Four of them against two creatures on Kiefer's side, plus a Displacer kicker for Kepke. Here's the Reality Smasher. It's 10 points of power for Lucas, but Devin's at 19. Lucas will have to pass back. With these displacers in play, I believe this is lethal. A draw from Kef from Kepke. Kepke currently at 19, Lucas Kiefer at 6. Yeah, Kepke has a little bit to think about. It has been a minute since he has seen Lucas's hands. He does not know that Lucas is on air right now. We kind of, you have to think it, right? If Lucas had something, it would have been played. Maybe a path to exile could have been added. Kepke did see the island in Kiefer's hand, so he knows that card. The other card is an unknown. Yeah, it's outer car waste, but Devin doesn't know that. Four mana is going to be another reality smasher for Kepke. That one certainly feels lethal. Three creatures are going to get through. They all have three power. This is overkill. Even with a blink on Kiefer's side, it's not going to save anything. Lucas is making him sweat. 
<laughs> Bluffs like the Path to Exile, but he doesn't have it. Devin Kepke once again wins a mirror, moves to 8 and 0 oh with Blue White Eldrazi. Yeah, Blue White Eldrazi is definitely a favorite in the mirror. I was expecting that duck to win. So, well, uh, Blue White Eldrazi did take one game off it. So before you say it's just a favorite in the mirror, it did lose one. That's fair. They, 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 I imagine on a long timeline, they probably would end up splitting that match.